Hello there, Aries. Welcome to your reading. So um, I'm going to relay the two images that I saw when I was meditating on this reading for you, and then we'll pull out the cards. So first of all, I see some, uh, there's an oven and you know how it has that glass panel where you can see what's cooking in the oven. So there are cookies baking and there's this little boy and he's like waiting anxiously for the cookies to, to finish baking. He's looking through that glass, that um, see-through panel from the oven and he's just like waiting, waiting, waiting so anxious and he's just like it's going to be so delicious when it finishes cooking. And then in the background is his mom. Um, she's wearing an apron. She's been cooking all day. She's looking at the stove and she is like cooking a pot of soup. She has a kettle on at one point and then she's like, um, she has a saucepan where she's melting some butter with some vegetables. So she's doing a gazillion things, multitasking. And the soup is boiling over. The butter is also, um, you know, boiling. And so everything is just boiling at the same time. And she's like a little bit stressed out, like not really sure what she needs to tend to first. So she's like looking at this stressed out while the kid is only looking at the cookies. Okay, so that's the scene that I saw for you. And so I feel for this month, it's um, a lot about not stretching yourself thin and as well learning to be patient, okay? Don't rush things. Things are going to come in divine timing. Don't push too hard. Don't be so hard on yourself. And especially don't overestimate the amount of time. You guys are really, really uh, bad at this, like overestimating the amount of time that it takes you to do something. Okay. And then um, stretching yourself too thin where you are pulled in so many different directions where things people and, and situations pulling you in different directions, uh, putting out, needing to put out fires in possibly many areas of your life and just, you know, um, being overbooked, too many things on your agenda, too many things on your plate and not being able to relax and just, you know, enjoy, really enjoy the moment. Um, so that's what I'm seeing. Um, I feel like there's something that you have been really anxiously waiting for for a very, very, very long time. And that whole, you know, something in the oven, I feel like for some of you, it could even be pregnancy, okay? Wanting to start a family, wanting to have a partner on board, wanting to like, I'm hearing like partner in crime, but I also feel like it's somebody that you can build something with, okay? Wanting a life partner, wanting somebody to have a family with, to build a family with, and especially to share some major, major uh, milestones and experiences in your life with. So I, I feel there's this element here about wanting to have that other person that you can spend the rest of your life with as well. Um, the other thing that comes through with the whole kitchen image, the kitchen is usually like um, where, where, where I, I would say where magic happens, where family and people come communally, you know, share and experience together, where we nurture each other through the, the food that we create. And especially um, if you are hosting a lot of people in your home environment, um, rather than trying to do everything okay rather than like planning and executing uh cooking a meal for like 30 guests you might want to take it easy and realistically just make it a potluck where everybody brings something to the table i feel like it's um the smart way to do it so that you're not stretching yourself so thin if there are specific things that you want to do for you know the people that you love by all means do it but be very very realistic with your time constraints and don't be so stressed out that you're not able to really enjoy the moment okay because it's the gathering it's the people that really matter it's not so much about showing off our culinary skills or, or showing up our kitchen or showing up our off our home it's really about people coming to see you and people wanting to spend time with you in an environment that is laid back that is relaxing that's calm and comforting so don't work yourself in a frenzy and especially you know uh, don't stress yourself out okay so be easy on yourself and be loving to yourself and be more forgiving with yourself
So there's definitely something that you have been uh, really, really uh, waiting on. So I feel for many of you, um, I'm hearing this strongly from this page of wands here. This is sort of like, you know, I'm ready. I'm, I'm ready for the next big thing. I'm ready to do a real job. I'm ready for something with more responsibilities. So I don't know what you guys have been doing. If you've been doing a lot of training, if you're in a, uh, um, like an environment where things are going really, really slow. The hangman, waiting in suspension, waiting for things to happen. Being in a situation where there's a lot of work to be done. There's a lot of people or projects or things that need you. It's, it's almost like you're there to help. You have the skills, you have the expertise, but for whatever reason, whoever is overseeing the situation feels like you're not ready. So they're not giving you that, that opportunity to prove yourself. They're not giving you that chance to get out there and get your hands dirty, roll up your sleeves and just take care of things. So it feels like you're in a state almost like of waiting, of suspension, of limbo, and you're not able to, it, it, it can feel really, really frustrating for a fire sign to not be able to get out into the world and do whatever it is that they want. It, it's, I feel like you might be in a capacity where you are learning things, okay? This is usually like going back to school, mastering a skill, mastering a specific concept, a theory, before you can go out into the world. Once again, this ivory tower type of a situation. So I feel like many of you, you're going through some training. It could be some legal training that you're uh, dealing with. It could be learning how to do things properly. There might be legal ramifications if things are not done in a specific way, or if it, it's, it's almost like you have to cover your butt so that you don't get sued, or you have to do things in a procedurally correct way. Otherwise people can, people can sue. So I feel whatever the situation is, I know that it's very, very frustrating and you feel like you've mastered it and you feel like you really want this opportunity to prove yourself, to put theory into practice and to be able to help a lot of people and to, to uh, make the situation better because there's obviously a need for you in this work situation, but you're not giving the chance and the opportunity to exert yourself okay so that's the first thing and it can be uh, really really frustrating but i feel like the overall message that i'm getting here is um in divine timing okay um you have to master one thing before you move on to master another okay it's like that woman in the kitchen she's multitasking and whenever we multitask our attention is always always um divided so when we do one thing, we can do it really, really well. When we multitask, our attention, our focus is drawn towards different things. And we could never do those things perfectly well the way we would have if we only had one thing on our plate. That's just the way the human brain works, okay? So as much as we feel like we can multitask, the quality of the, of the, the outcome of the end result always uh, diminishes. And so I feel like the universe is teaching you a lot more about patience, a lot more about let's learn something as frustrating as it is. Let's learn something and be a master at it so that when we break away from this ivory tower, when we bring theory into practice, into the real world, we can do it right, okay? The kings, and this is your energy, the kings always do things the right way. They've already mastered it. They've been through it. They have the uh, skills and the knowledge and the experience and whatever it is that's required of a, a ruler, a leader, a uh, breadth of vision, um, hindsight, you know, the, the, the whole uh, learning from past experiences. But I feel like, you know, they, the, the universe really wants you to master rather than going into a situation excitedly, but not having the skills and the necessary experience from your past to make the best of a situation or to make something be the best that it could be. So a little bit of, um, a little bit more patience and a little bit more waiting, I feel is going to be in store for you. Um, for some of you, there could be a lot of issues regarding children, okay? 
um, dietary habits when it comes to children. And I love this card. This is the Nine of Cups. Okay. Um, I usually think of this as like the, the binge eating or um, a, a household that might be a little bit neglected. And then the, the children are eating whatever is, is around, usually junk food or usually snacks. The parents might be so busy or the parents might not be in the picture or there's some issues here. Um, I feel for some of you, if it's not your own children, you might be dealing with a child um, and you might be compensating, um, taking care of a child or giving the child a lot of love and attention or you're feeling like the parents of the child are turning their back on the kid. Okay, as sad as that is. So if it's not your children, I feel like you're experiencing this. Um, you're playing the role of a caretaker. You're, you're, you're doing something to rectify a situation because you're just like, that's not fair. It's not healthy for these kids to be living like this or it's not healthy for this child to be in this type of environment. So I feel, I feel some of you are stepping up taking care of a person, trying to do the best for them. They might not have the best dietary habits. They might be very picky with food. And for some of you, if this is not a child, you're taking care of a person. Like you're doing your best to really take care of a person. Um, it can be a little bit difficult on your end because, you know, time constraints, responsibilities, whenever we take care of another person, um, and especially because you guys don't like to be weighed down by responsibilities, okay? You design your life in a way where you can go, come and go as you please. You can be in one city one day and the next city another day. Like you, you design your life without baggage, without responsibilities. Not because you're afraid of it, but because if you're not ready for it, you know yourself well enough to know you're not ready for it. So I feel like you have a little bit of resent resentment about somebody who's who has bitten off more than they could chew and they're not taking care of their responsibilities so it could be you know somebody who has children when they're not able to physically take care of themselves let alone their children and then you have to step up and and kind of tend to this situation it's like doing that damage control like um cleaning up after them Cleaning up after the other person, not so much the children, but cleaning up after the other person because they bit off more than they could chew and they create more work, more problems for everybody else. And so you have a little bit of resentment that I'm, I'm sensing here, but I also feel like you're dealing with this person, um, They re whatever contributions you're making in their life right now, especially if it's somebody you're taking care of, a child or somebody else. Um, your efforts are not going unnoticed, okay? I feel like this karma is going to come back to you tenfold. Like, it's really good karma because I feel like you're taking care of the situation from the goodness of your heart and because you feel like the situation is not fair. The justice card. Two people fighting over something when there's a they're not really seeing the big picture. It's, it's like ego battles, okay? Coming from a very petty space and you're not tolerating that you're seeing that there's wisdom that is beyond these people you might even be the mediator in a conflict you might be seeing the bigger picture and you're showing them that bigger picture by being the bigger person and taking care of situations and not whining about it and just you know doing what you feel is right and it can be really frustrating too because you guys feel like you can do so much more okay so you feel like you can do so much more but you're very cognizant about not stepping on other people's toes not overstepping your boundaries and also still holding the other person uh, responsible so like you're not doing everything to alleviate them of the need to do it to take care of their responsibilities you still want to teach them that concept about responsibility so that they don't renege on what it is there's that they're supposed to do you want to do more but you don't want that to be kind of like that precedent where they rely on you and then they kind of sit back and kick up their feet so i feel like you want justice and balance and reciprocity in a situation and you you almost feel it, it's it's like this inner conflict you know with fire signs 
we do what needs to be done. We don't want to sit there and discuss and delegate and, and talk things over and talk about our feelings. Whenever something needs to be done, we do it. And over time, when we keep taking these actions and, and keep initiating, the other person feels like they can sit back and that, that can be really aggravating. It can be really aggravating and especially in a situation where you feel like it's wrong. I have to do something about it. I have to step up. And then in the process of you stepping up, the other person steps down and you're trying to find that, that middle ground. You're trying to find that balance to be nice, but at the same time, not enable a bad behavior. So that's what I'm feeling here. There's a little bit of tug of war and conflict internally within you guys. Like how much should I do? How much is enough? You know, um, so that's what I'm feeling here. So I definitely see for many of you, uh, you're learning a lot about how to nurture, care for, and um, I, I feel like it's almost like you're being prepped to be the caretaker for somebody. You're being prepped to have children of your own. So if you found yourself like having to take care of children, all of a sudden children are really big fixtures in your life. I feel like the universe is, is prepping you to be either a really good mother or to be a really good father. Okay, to, to learn to be more emotional, to be to learn to be more emotionally available. You might be dealing with somebody who's very, very sensitive, okay? Could be a child who's very sensitive, um, where they they're they're withdrawn, so if they're hurt, they might overeat to to kind of like fill in that emotional void. Okay, or you might be dealing with a child that is a little bit more rambunctious. They don't really listen, uh, and the more you force them, the more they resist. So you have to like really um, soften your tone and soften your approach with them. So, for example, you might be telling them, you know, this is what I call like a rambunctious child. Okay, um, page of wands. And Aries, as independent as you are, I feel like you naturally attract people who are very, very independent. And especially if you have children, they're going to be a handful because they're they're going to question authority. They're going to they're not going to take no for an answer. They're going to push boundaries, and they're smart and they're just um, really independent. And so they're not going to uh, take no for an answer. They need an explanation. They need a reason and you have to appeal to their emotional senses. So for example, you tell them, you know, after school, you need to go uh, home straight away. I don't want you hanging out outside. And they're like, I'm not gonna get into any trouble. I don't need to go home. But you need to tell them like, after school, please come home. I'm really worried about you. It's getting darker now because we're in the winter in, in the Northern hemisphere. Um, it's getting darker earlier. There are, you know, it's a bad neighborhood that you're passing through. So I just want you to be home. That way I'm not worried about you. Then when you're home, you can do whatever you want. So I feel like you have to make that emotional appeal with these children or these young people in your life so that they understand your restrictions come from a place of love rather than a place of punishment. Okay. And so we have to really change the way in which we communicate to kind of like convey what it is that we want or expect from the other person and especially why we want that from them. It's not about us being mean or, or you know, putting, uh, laying down the rules. It's because you care about them and you don't want bad things to happen to them. Okay. Um, and I'm dwelling on that because, you know, that whole cookies in the oven. Um, there might be a child that's eating, overeating or somebody who's uh, binging who, who might not have, like I said, the best dietary habits. And I feel like their health might be catching up to them. And you have to be the one to kind of gently like tell them, hey, you know, you got to lay off that thing that's not really good for your health that you're putting in your body chemically or, you know, food wise, you, you have to kind of lay off it because I, I don't feel like it's, it's healthy for you. And approaching that from a, a space of understanding and kindness is a lot more, it's going to make the other person a lot more receptive than approaching them from a place of harshness, okay, and criticism. So um, that's what I'm feeling here. 
I feel like for many of you, um, there's a lot of training that you're going through and it's like, it's frustrating, I understand. But it's gonna come to an end and then you can kind of like spread your wings and, and you know, um, practice what you preach. And you can have an opportunity, especially to kind of um, really have more independence to do things without people looking over your shoulders to see if you're doing things properly. And then I also feel as well in partnerships, I have um, three signs. So I have a, a, an air sign, Aquarius, Gemini, and Libra. And I have this here, King of Swords. You might be having um, a lot of discussions with this person if it's a romantic partner, okay? Um, over family trauma, healing past family issues. Um, they might come from a broken home or you might come from a broken home. And you're, you're both bringing a lot of fears. Fears about commitment, fears about settling down. I feel like the love is definitely there. But both parties are, are, are bringing to the table a lot of like fears from their respective dating past, um, marital past even family trauma and I feel like you're healing together but the process is still ongoing so it's gonna take a little bit more time okay others of you dealing with a water sign a Pisces a cancer or a Scorpio I feel like this person and I have here the Queen of Cups I feel like this person is a lot more into you than you are into them that's what I'm, I'm sensing they really like you and you know that they're a really good person like you know they're a really good person this is somebody male or female they could be the one that you want to bring home to mom and dad they you want them to meet your parents you want to bring them around your friends because they're um they're loving they're kind they're compassionate um but i feel like I don't know how much fun or, or excitement or enjoyment you're getting out of this relationship. So I feel like there's somebody here that is really, really, really into you. Like they're really into you. But I feel like they're looking for a relationship and you might be looking for fun. Okay, and they're ready for a relationship. You might not feel like you're ready or you might not want that commitment, the whole nine yards with this person. Um, for some of you, this person might be a little bit older than you. And I feel like they're they're actually very attractive, very beautiful, but they are looking for a relationship. They're not ones to kind of um, run around and, you know, um, collect bed partners. They're, they're not like that. They're really looking for a relationship. They might have children of their own. They might come, they, they might like be dealing with a, um, like a separation or a divorce. Okay, so they're not completely single just yet. And then I also feel a fire sign, Sagittarius, Aries, Leo. There might be a distance thing between you and this relationship partner. Uh, there's a lot of coming and going, getting back together. And then there's distance. So I don't know if you're like breaking up and then making up, but I'm seeing distance between you and this person here. Um, I feel overall, we have here the wish card. So I definitely see a lot of communication and a lot of love and a lot of compromise and a lot of uh, help that's going to be coming into the picture and like I said if you're planning to do this massive cookout you know inviting hosting and inviting a bunch of people to your home just uh, make sure you actually enjoy the process don't stretch yourself too thin too thin don't overbook your schedule don't overcommit your time because you're going to be stressed out and it's a month it's your birthday month you're supposed to relax and you know enjoy the people and the company so don't stress yourself out make it a potluck okay i hope the reading is helpful aries um i hope that it helps you navigate this energy for this month i don't have any news here regarding finances so no news is always good news in my book i feel like it is a lot more um, about you know being patient and getting through the learning process and and then being able to you know uh, ex exert yourself in the physical world okay so best of luck with everything I will see you guys soon and uh, have a wonderful birthday time uh, for those of you who are still emailing me about readings I don't do readings anymore um, for private clients 
I do have somebody that I highly recommend. I've included a link to her uh, scheduling website in the description box below. Her name is Bridget and she is based out of California. So uh, if you'd like to book a reading for yourself, please click on her link and do so through that um, through her, okay? Uh, take care of yourself. I'll talk to you soon.